That's the kind of prestige she had. But here, what I wanted to share with you before we conclude. With all that prestige she had, beloved daughter, the prophet told her in her ears, you will be the queen of paradise. And yet when the time came for her to get married, you know, this young boy called Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and who he went to the prophet, peace be upon him. He finally became the, the, the caliph of Islam, and who was a powerful man, dynamic, a man of wisdom, a man of bravery, a man of leadership, a man of power. A young guy then, and he went to the prophet, peace be upon him. You know what happened? When he went to the prophet, he couldn't talk. So the prophet was like, what's going on? Why are you so quiet? And he wants to say something, but he can't. But you know, a father, blessed with the wisdom and the hikmah, and even though Ali radiallahu ta'ala, who was called the Babel Hikmah, the door of wisdom, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, while Ali radiallahu ta'ala, who was the door of wisdom, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was the father of wisdom. So he looked at him and he said, you came to make a proposal for my daughter. That's why you can't talk. Could the Prophet, you know, I get a little goosebump when I say that. Could the Prophet say something new? That's the only thing, that shyness with Ali asking him for his daughter, that Ali was a brave man. Brave youngster. So anyhow, cut a long story short. So he made the arrangements. Okay, you want to marry my daughter? He said, of course, no problem, granted my daughter for you. He didn't ask him, you got a doctorate, Ali? Which university you qualified from? Miami? UM? FAU? FIU? He didn't ask him all of that. He just did what was Islamically right. He said, you know, there is a law called mahar to give a dowry to the bride. What do you have to give her, Ali? Ali was like, nothing. The prophet could have said, well, you know, you're too much of a poor boy for my daughter. She's queen of paradise. Where you came from, sir? You know, like many fathers will tell boys, you don't have that degree like my daughter. You don't have this. You don't have that. You need to go get all this. He said, what do you have if you don't have mahar on, uh, to give the gift to the bride? He said, nothing. The Prophet said, but don't you have a shield? Because you know, he was a nice, he was a warrior, he was a fighter, a dynamic person. The shield. He said, don't you have a shield? He said, yes. He said, well, sell it. And let that be your mahar for the bride. So he sold it. You know, if you calculate the cost of that in today's time, there's a lot of cost to do with real and silver and gold and today. You know how much that is today? How much, brother? A hundred thousand? Fifty dollars. Khamsin. Fifty dollars. The prophet is letting his beautiful daughter be married for fifty dollars. Allahu Akbar. You see how Islam was a priority in his life? He saw a pious, nice boy, and he gave his daughter, who is a queen of paradise, not a queen of his home, not queen in the world, queen of paradise to this humble little boy who only gave $50 worth. Today, my fathers and my elders, and I say elders because I always still say I'm 25. When I see the kind of stuck for like corruption in the Muslim community, that you demand 100,000 and 200,000 and thousands of dollars for your daughter, sometimes I wonder where the corruption is. Sometimes I wonder, is that the reason why many girls are not married? Huh? Because you demand too much and you don't accept what God and his prophet peace be upon him said you should accept for your daughters or your sons we look only and you know what we have done today look at $50 nothing is wrong in having a nice wedding for your children you could invite 10,000 people and feed them you know where the problem is it's not about a big wedding with a big amount of people no you can invite the whole country for your wedding. Nothing is wrong. And you feed people. That's barakah. But when you spend money in unnecessary things in the wedding, and you invite 50 people, you can't even invite your brothers and sisters. You can't even invite your brothers and sisters' children because you spend hundreds of thousands in the decoration. And now you can't invite your own blood ties. Huh? You gotta, and when you invite the few hundred people, you've got to check the grain of rice if they eat too much or not. Islam allows you to feed, kill the sheep and the cow and the goats and share for the people and enjoy it. Nothing's wrong. 
When, Allah, when the Prophet speaks of israf and Allah speaks of extravagance, he means those unnecessary things that we do for show and pump to match with society. And today, a lot of us, we, in place of that $50, we use people's degree and diploma to match that. You may not ask, you may say, well, you know, Sheikh, I did not want anything from the boy. I told him, no mahar for my daughter. Don't play slick with me. But you scan him, you vet him like Trump says, I will vet everybody. You vet him to see how much degree he has, how much money his father has, how much property he will get, and say, good match for my daughter. So don't play slick with the Islam, my brothers and sisters. I know some of you, some of us, this may fall in your garden, but don't get angry with me for that, eh? please. If you want to get angry, go take this out of Quran and Sunnah. Remove it from the history of Islam. You love, you live a life to obey the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sometimes we don't like to hear the haq and the truth. But I'm only reminding myself because I don't want Allah on the day of judgment to question me that I did not remind myself and the people. So I want to again tell you, sisters, this khutbah today is basically dedicated to our sisters. Don't let your father abuse you and fool you by, by spoiling your life. By getting you a wealthy man who has no Islam, no character, no good, because there's a lot of money and character coming down the way, and then you're unhappy, your life is ruined, your children's life ruined, and you go off the path of Islam. You will have to answer to Allah for that if you're smart and you're intelligent and you're above the age of puberty. If you're a little girl, 9 and 10 years, and he forced you into a marriage, you have no choice. So I'm telling you, my sisters, don't fool yourself. And don't think you could fool Allah. Even your fathers have no rights to do that. Because a woman once went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, my father forced me to marry this person. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, nikah not valid. Not valid. Okay, so what is culture that a lot of us bring and add to Islam is what really creates the problem. You can't defend these things. We need to live it the right thing. So, Think about the Prophet ﷺ and his daughter. He looked at a good personality like Ali radiallahu ta'ala knew, who had nothing, gave it to his daughter, the queen of paradise. He could have said, I'm the prophet. I'm the everything. You got to come better than that, man. You should be a chief or the son of a chief. Which sunnah do we follow, my brothers and sisters? My father, you brothers who go to Hajj and Ramadan, you look like you're an angel just walk down here. Oh boy, sometimes I wonder if it's only Laylatul Qadr night, I see Malaika, some of the men come here in Ramadan, every day they look like angels, well, not look, no, they act like angels. But then we practice a different Quran and a different Islam. Sorry to put it like that. Don't get angry with me and stop coming to Darulum. That was the whole purpose of Darulum, a reminder. Okay? A reminder.